Hi, this is Ali Arango of LittleGuyCGI.com, and today I want to show you how to model a pirate hunter ship in Blender 2.71. So let's get started. Okay, if this is your first time in Blender, I recommend you go to File, User Preferences, go to Input, and then choose Select with left click. Now, Blender's default select is with right click, and this may confuse you if you're coming from Adobe or other 3D programs. Also, if you happen to be on a laptop, if you put a check mark here, what this will do is make your number keys at the top of your laptop keyboard uh, respond like they're the number keys on a full keyboard that are normally all the way to the right, and these keys usually refer to uh, changing views. Also, to do this uh, tutorial, you want to click Add Ons and you want to scroll down. And uh, what add-ons are is uh, in every copy. And if you have Blender 2.71, uh, this is already in your uh, in your copy of Blender. These add-ons just have to have a check mark put into the put put on uh, the different add-ons to make sure they're turned on. So you want to put a check mark uh, in Mesh to Inset Polygons, Loop Tool, uh, and Relax. Okay, in Blender, uh, there's two main modes that you work in to model. There's object mode, and then there's edit mode. We're going to spend most of our time in this tutorial in edit mode, though a few times we'll come back in the object mode. Uh, if you click here, and uh, you can just select edit mode. You can also get into edit mode by hitting tab. In Blender, you, te you work by uh, moving and pulling vertices, edges, and faces. Okay, in Blender you also work by uh, extruding uh, vertices, edges, and faces also. The first thing I want you to do is hit go hit 1 on your number keypad to go into front view. I'm going to roll my middle mouse button just to zoom in. I'm going to hit Control r to put a loop cut in. You can see that purple line is a preview of where the loop cut's going to go. I'm going to left click to lock that in. Left click a second time to lock that in. I'm then going to hit Z to go transparent. We're in front perspective mode. We want to be in front orthographic mode so you can hit 5 in your number keypad. You can see right here it just takes you into front orthographic mode. Okay what you want to do now is make sure that nothing is selected so you're going to hit A to deselect everything. You're then going to go to face select, you're going to hit B, you're going to select this entire side right here. Then You're then going to hit X to bring up your delete menu then you're going to select faces to delete this entire side. Now what we're about to do is we're about to apply a mirror modifier that will effectively allow us to do half of the uh, the work, the normal modeling work. Uh, it's important that your 3D cursor is right in the center. And what you want to, if you're right clicking by some tangent, your 3D cursor goes off to the side of it, shift C, it'll put your 3D cursor right back. I'm going to sh hold shift in my middle mouse button to pan, then roll my middle mouse button in just to get back to this view. Okay, so what you're going to do now is, if you take your mouse over to this menu right here and you hold your mouse uh, down and then pull to the side, It'll allow you to pull to the side. You can then hit this modifier button. Click here, and then you'll see a mirror, the mirror modifier. Select this, and what this does is this effectively mirrors this side over to this side. Okay, this is your mirror modifier options right here. I'll pull this out a little bit so you can see. Put a uh, check mark right here for clipping, and then you want to click here uh, as you work on this mirror modifier. Okay, what you want to do now is you want to hit 3 to go into your side view. I'm just rolling the mouse wheel to zoom out, holding shift to pan. And then I'm going to hit S to scale on the Y axis. Whoops, sorry. I'm going to hit A to select everything. I'm going to hit S to scale on the Y axis. You're going to pull out to about that far. You're now going to hit Control R to activate your loop tool again. You're going to roll your mouse wheel two times to put in three loop cuts. Left click to lock in, left click to lock in again. Uh, we're now going to hit 1 to go back into front view. I'm going to roll the middle mouse button to zoom in. Now what we're going to do is we're going to hit Control r Yet again, for more loop cuts, we're going to roll our mouse wheel one time. And then left click the lock in, left click the lock in again. Okay, now we're now going to select right here to go to vertices select. We're going to hit A. We're going to hit uh, the O key right next to the P key to turn on our proportional edit. What this allows us to do is to, to move more than one vertice at one time. So we're going to hit B to box select. And this gives us a, a select similar as you would find on a window or, or a Mac. You're going to select this vertice right here. It looks like you're only selecting one vertice, but the reason why we turned this transparent was actually you're actually selecting this whole line of vertice. So that's why box select is what you'll tend to use rather than like if I just left click right here, 
now when I turn it to that side, you can see there's only one vertice selected. So anyway, I'm going to hit one on the number keypad. I'm going to hit A to deselect. I'm going to hit B to box select. And then I'm going to, you know, select what looks like one, but is really that whole line of vertices there. With this proportional edit tool, whenever I hit G, you can see the area of influence on it. You control this area of influence by rolling your mouse wheel. So what I'm going to do is, uh, after hitting G, I'm going to hit X. And see that red line? That red line shows you how you can move your vertice. So I'm just going to push to the side. See how I'm just moving that one vertice? When I roll my mouse wheel and I increase the area of influence, watch the uh, vertice right above. You can see that vertice above, as the area of influence increases, you can see it pulling in more. And right here, we're basically forming the, the front of this, what's going to be the ship. Okay, now I'm holding my middle mouse button. I'm just turning, and you can just manipulate your view by holding the middle mouse button. I'm going to hit Z, and I'm just, you know, taking a quick, quick look of what we've done so far. Okay, now what we're going to do is hit A to deselect those vertices uh, that we had selected. We're going to hit Control R again, and if you haven't seen on R already, you can understand you tend to use loop cut a whole lot when you model in uh, in 3D. So you're going to put a loop cut right here. You're going to left click once, and then I'm going to left click yet again to lock it in. Now we're going to go to vertice select, and I'm going to hold Shift, which allows me to select more than one face. It, you know, I clicked here, held Shift, clicked here, clicked here. So now I'm, I'm just, you know, uh, holding the middle mouse button just so I can get a view, so I can take the manipulator here and just push this out. Actually, when I started to push it out, you see right there, because my area of influence was so big, it's not doing what I want. And what I want is this to come like below forward. What I can actually do is hit G to see my area of influence. And then I'm going to roll the area of influence down small. Then I'm going to hit Y. And now it's giving me what I want. And I can just keep rolling that area of influence uh, down. All right, so now what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to hit O to turn off the proportional edit. I'm going to left, whoops, I'm going to go to edge select. I'm going to select this edge right here. I'm going to hold shift, select all, all these three edges, and I'm going to push out just a little, actually a little bit there. Okay, now I'm going to hit three on the number keypad, and I'm going to turn back on my proportional edit. Oops, it is on. Okay, you can see if it's on or off here. If you're, by the way, uh, Blender, res Blender shortcut keys just respond to whether you're over the 3D viewport or not. So if I hit O here, you'll see the proportional edit turn off. However, if I have my mouse over here and I hit O, oh, nothing happens, nothing happens, nothing happens. As soon as I bring it right here, now you can see it, your shortcut keys respond. Uh, what we're going to do now is we're going to hit, uh, go to vertice, select. This manipulator sometimes will get in your way. This, uh, uh, you know, with the, the the standard thing that you push and pull things as your manipulator. When it gets in the way to get out of the way, you can hit Control Space to temporarily take it out of the way. I'm going to hit A to deselect. I'm going to hit Z to go transparent so I can select whatever vertices I need to, not just the ones that I see. I'm going to hit B for box select. I'm going to grab these vertices right here. I'm going to hit G. And then as I pull, see that's only pulling those first two vertices. Now watch what happens as I roll my mouse wheel from my area of influence. You see the other vertices responding as the area of influence increases. So you kind of like roll it according to what you need. So that that's basically what I want right there. And now I'm just going to hold my middle mouse button and turn the view. I'm going to hit Z to go solid mode again. I'm holding shift in the middle mouse button to pan. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to hit control R to put a loop cut right here. Now we're at, whoops, I'm going to hit Control L to go back. I want this loop cut. So actually, by the way, let me show you this. If I hit A, you see this loop cut right here. If I want to select that whole loop cut, what I can do is hold Alt. And right when I select on it, Alt will select whatever loop cut you, you want to select. So here's a loop cut right here. I can hold Alt. I have select there. You know, so very, very useful. Anyway, I'm going to show you something else real useful. What I want is I want a straight line here. Now, because of the loop cuts and because of the turns that we made right here, the vertices are curving. There's an easy way to deal with that. If I hit S to scale on the Y axis, is it Y? Y axis, and then zero. Whoops, I didn't want proportional edit on me. Hit O to turn it off. If I hit S to scale on the Y axis, zero. You see what happened there? I left click to lock in. When I did that, it automatically made this straight. You know, so that's useful to know. Anyway, with this, uh, with that done, what we're going to do is go to face select. I'm going to uh, actually hold C or hit C and what that does that brings up paint select and it allows me to paint over whatever I'm selected on so here's face select so I'm just going to paint 
all these together and you know, it's an easy way of getting a selection. Okay, and with these faces selected, what we're going to do is hit E to extrude on the Z axis. If you don't see a line there and it's wobbly, just hit Z again. You'll you'll see that preview line and it is nice because it constrains you just to Z axis. You're going to take this height to about there. I'm just holding the middle mouse button to get a, to get a view. I actually want this uh, ship to be wider, so what I'm going to do is hit A to select everything. I'm going to hit S to scale on the X axis and take it out to... Yeah, about like that. I actually want to make this a little bit uh, longer this way. So what I'm going to do is hit S to scale on the Z axis. About like that. I'm going to actually hit S to scale on the Y axis slightly also. And then I think I'm going to hit control space to bring our manipulator back and just pull to the side just... Make it a little bit wider and the reason why i'm able to you might say well why are you able to, to scale it like that just by pulling because we have the mirror modifier on there and i have this clipping this clipping keeps this ship from separating as a matter of fact if i turn the clipping off and then i pull you can see the ship ship separate so clipping keeps it from separating so therefore when i uh have the ship together and i pull this clipping constantly keeps it together so it in a way it gives us another sense of of scaling Another way of scaling, I mean. And now we're going to do is hold the middle mouse button, look at the back of the ship, and we're actually going to select, just like we did at the beginning, we're going to select these vertices here. I'm just holding shift as I select to select multiple vertices. I'm going to pull out slightly there. We're now going to go to edge select. We're going to hold, select this edge, hold shift, and select all of these edges. And then we're just going to take the manipulator out just to pull out a little bit there. Now what we're going to do is go to face select. We're going to hit C for paint select. We're going to paint all of these, uh, whoops, we're going to face select, not edge select. We're going to hit C again and, and uh, paint all of these uh, faces right here. Then we're going to hit E to extrude, uh, no axis, and left click to lock in. Now when we hit E to extrude, what we did was, because we didn't push or pull anywhere, we hit E and we left click. Looked like we didn't do anything. What we actually did was we created new geometry right here. Because we created that new geometry, we're able to scale in like this. So we're just scale, scaling, in, you know, no axis at first. Now we're going to hit S to scale in the X axis. And you can see that red line right there. That red line is giving us a preview, letting us know where we're going to scale. So now we're just scaling to the side like this. And now what we're going to do is take a manipulator, we're going to take these selected faces, push them forward a little bit, push them slightly down, just slightly. Uh, and now what we're going to do is, uh, I'm actually going to hit S to scale in the Y axis. I'm going to pull the manipulator back just a little bit. So you don't want these edges crossing those edges right there just because it can give you problems. Anyway, I'm going to hit E to extrude on the Z axis. If that preview goes away, just hit Z again. And we're going to take this straight down about like that, not too deep. Okay, what I want to do now is I want to extrude these faces right here. So I'm going to hit A to deselect all this. But I don't like how these are, are curved. These are curved a little bit. Uh, they're not flat or, or, you know, pointing flat up or straight up, I guess you might say. Uh, so what we're going to do is we're going to select them. So we have face select on. I'm going to hold shift. I'm going to select these faces right here. I'm going to hit S to scale on the Z axis, zero. And what that did is that flattened out those faces. So now with those faces flattened out, we're going to hit E to extrude on the Z axis. If it's wobbly, just hit Z again. We're going to take this up to about there. Okay, now I'm going to hold the middle mouse button, turn to see the back of the ship. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to select these faces right here. I'm going to select, select these top faces right here. And I'm going to select the faces right here because I want to delete them. So I'm going to hit X to bring up the delete menu. I'm going to select faces just to delete those uh faces right there. Okay, now I'm going to hold the middle mouse button, turn to the side yet again. I'm going to hit Control R to put some loop cuts in here. So let's see. It's uh, There's the first loop. So we roll one time, we get two loop cuts, loop cuts, three, four, five, six. So let's put in six loop cuts. I'm going to left click the lock in, and then I'm going to left click the lock in yet again. Uh, now what I'm going to do is hit Control. I'm going to hit A to deselect those loop cuts. I'm going to hit Control R, 
and you can see my preview of my loop clutch right there. So I'm going to left click the lock in one time. Because I left clicked only one time, I still have the ability to move this loop cut up and down. So I'm going to put this loop cut in like about here. Left click the lock in. Left click the lock in fully again. I'm going to hit Control R yet again. Left click one time to lock in. I'm going to move it where I want, which is right here. Then I'm going to left click the lock in and then left click the lock in again. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to hold. I'm going to select this uh, face right here. Whoops, I'm going to go to face select. I'm going to select this face right here. Let me zoom in with the middle mouse button. I'm going to hold shift and middle mouse button to pan. So I'm going to hold shift and uh, select this face, this face, and this face. Then I'm going to hit X to bring up the delete menu. And I'm going to select the faces to delete those faces. See, I can still see the faces like on the other side. I'm going to take advantage of the view. I'm going to left click here to select that face, hold shift and select this face this face and I believe that face is the right face let's see I'm not sure let's deselect this face we're gonna keep these three faces selected we're gonna hit X to delete select faces and yeah we have that and that's what we want I watched this there's a guy he does low poly things he had done a low poly ship and I learned this technique that's pretty cool from him uh, get a chance to check out his channel pig arts does some amazing stuff anyway I'm gonna uh, uh, hold all I'm going to select this loop right here, right? I'm going to hold shift while holding alt. I'm going to select right here. All right, so I have this loop cut selected on this side. You see that right there? That's selected. And now this is selected. So when I, what I can do with both of those selected, I'm going to hit control E. And then I'm going to go to uh, bridge edge loops. I left click and look at that. So basically before we had this kind of like fake looking almost like, you know, it looks like it, you know, just not thickness here, but now by selecting those two loops and then control E, we get like this solidness there very easily. So it's very cool. So I'm going to hit A to deselect there with the edge select. Let's do it again. I'm going to hit, I'm going to help hold alt, which selects this whole loop. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to hold shift and alt. I'll zoom, I'll hold the middle mouse button to turn so you can see the other side. Hold shift and alt, select here. So I have this loop cut selected and that loop. There's two loop cuts that need to be selected. So now that I have two and they're right across from each other, that's what's going on here, right? Now I can hit Control E, <coughs> excuse me, bridge edge loops, and we get this nice solid, you know, this put in there very easily. And uh, I just wanted to spin around to show you, you know, what could be done with that. So now we're just going to do the same thing again. We're going to hit A to D select. We're going to hold Alt. We selected that loop cut. Hold Shift and alt select this loop cut now we hit control e to bring up this edges menu and then we select bridge ed edge loops and now we get that very cool very nice blender has a lot of very cool tools that uh, allow you to do work efficiently and quickly easily uh, i'm going to show you another one right here basically what we want to do is we have this gap right here we want to fill this in right so if i select an edge and i hold alt and i select here there's a thing called the grid fill. When I hit Control F, this faces menu pops up. If I select grid fill, it'll say select two edges. It doesn't work. Uh, to get this thing to work, what you have to do is, because this side actually doesn't exist, this is a mirrored side. Like if I click this eye, this will take off the mirror modifier. You can see that we're actually working with half of the ship. The mirror fire modifier is just great because it allows us to do, you know, basically half the work. Anyway, to get the grid fill to work, what you want to do is you want to Go to vertice, select, select this vertice. I'm going to control space to temporarily take away the manipulator. And this vertice, and then you're going to hit F, right? So now we we have this. It's it's kind of like, uh, I don't know. I mean, I don't want to confuse you, but just select these two vertices here. You know, this is the mirror modifier part. Now with that select, we're going to go to edge select. We're going to hold alt, select right here, right? Uh, and now what we're going to do is we're going to hit uh, control F and then grid fill Whoop, let me select here also control F again grid fill and now you see we have this filled it filled in here like just that that quickly right but it's all weird and whacked out and messed up right when you have the you have these options for grid fill right here so what we're gonna do is click these options up right and now you see as we click this span button now it's nicely filled in you know very quickly very efficiently uh, just just it's very cool tool okay what we're going to do now is we're going to uh, hold the middle mouse button rotate 
to this view, I'm going to roll back with the middle mouse button. I'm going to go to face select. I'm going to hold shift. I'm going to select this face here and this face here. So we're actually selecting two of the mirror modifiers, selecting the other side. We're then going to hit E to extrude. Left click the lock in, and we just created new geometry. So when we hit E to extrude, we just created four new faces right here, right? Now what we're going to do is hit S to scale. We're going to scale that new geometry we just created. Scale it in just slightly. Then we're going to hit S to scale in the x-axis. You can see that red preview line showing us where we're going to scale. And we're going to just left click to lock in here. And uh, what we're going to do now is we're going to hit Y. And that is the separate menu. And it separates inside of an object. And I'm going to, uh, what that allows us to do, is since we hit Y with these faces selected, we can hit G. This, uh, actually, let me, I'm going to hit, I'm going to right click to get out of that. I'm going to hit Control Space to bring it back to Manipulator. With these selected, when we hit Y, it allows us to do this. So now basically we have a, a door that we can play with for later on. And what I'm going to do is hit E to extrude on the Z axis. If it wobbles, hit Z again. Make it about that thick right there. And with that still in the air, what I'm going to do is I'm going to, uh, with face select still on, I'm going to hold Alt. I'm going to select these edges. Thanks. Select these edges right here. By holding Alt, it allows me to select that whole loop. Now I'm going to hit E to extrude on the Z axis just to give us a little lip. If you don't see the, uh, if it wobbles, you know, just hit Z again. So just to give us a little lip here for this uh, door coming up. So now we're going to select one face. Here's another very useful thing. I select the face here. If I select a face in an edge or a vertice here, I can hit Control L. It allows me to se select the whole entire object. And now I'm just going to push this door back into place, and we'll uh, we'll come back to that later. Okay, now what we're going to do is we are going to take our 3D cursor. We're going to actually we're going to go to Edge Select. We're going to select this edge right here. Oh, edge Select. Select this edge right here. We're going to hit Shift S. This brings up our Snap menu. We're going to select Cursor to selected. Puts our cursor right there. Then we're going to hit Shift A, we're going to go to plane and bring a plane in here. We're now going to hit R to rotate on the X axis, 9, 0. Then we're going to hit R to rotate on the Z axis, 9, 0. What the heck? Sorry, I right clicked it. Right click is almost like a little small version of Control Z. When you're moving objects, we're going to hit R to rotate on the Z axis, 9, 0, not Z, sorry. R to rotate on the X axis, 9, 0, there we go. I click the lock in. R to rotate on the Z axis, 9, 0, which is what we wanted. Uh, so anyway, we're going to hit S to scale on the Z axis, right? Get this to about this height here. Birds are outside singing, it's cool. We're going to line this up right here. Now we're going to hit uh, S to scale on the X axis, whoops, on the Y axis. See, the preview line is cool because if you remember it's there, it actually shows you. It's almost like, are you sure you know what you're doing? Yeah, you're going this direction. It's kind of cool. Then we're going to hit S to scale on the Y axis. Again, I'm going to take it. We want it kind of filling up this area right here. And S to scale on the Y axis to make it a little bit. Okay, yeah. I don't, I don't, okay, so we have that there. Now what we're going to do is... Uh, we're going to hit a. Okay, now what we're going to do is we're going to hit Control R to put loop cuts in. We're going <clears> to, <throat> excuse me, we're going to roll our mouse wheel. Get a decent amount of doubt of uh, loop cuts about there. No, no exact number. I just rolled to what looked about right to me as far as doing this. I'm going to. Left click the lock in, left click the lock in again. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to hit Control R and I'm going to roll my mouse wheel one time, right? I'm going to left click one time to, move, to lock in, not twice. One time allows us to still have movement. I'm going to S to scale on the Z axis and move both of these uh, edges like that. Left click the lock in. Now I'm going to go to Face Select. I'm going to select every other face. So here's a face there. So I'm going to select this face. I'm going to hold Control Space to take away the manipulator. Select every other face just like this.
Then you're going to hit X to uh, bring up your delete menu. Select faces to delete. And okay, now what you're going to do with you're going to do is with face select on you're going to select one face you're going to hit control l to select all of this uh you know new geometry you made here you're going to hit e to extrude on the x-axis and you're going to bring it out not too far about like that just a little bit of thickness right and then going to hit control l to select the whole thing yet again and we're going to hit s to scale on the z-axis and uh, shrink it down some about like that hit control space to bring our Manipulator back, push this down. I don't like how this is curved right here, so what we're going to do is with our face select on, we're going to select right here. I'm going to hold shift in the middle mouse button to pan. I'm going to zoom in so you can see what's going on. See how this is curved? I don't want that actually. So what I'm going to do is hold shift, select all these faces, and I'm going to hit S to scale on the Y axis, zero, and it'll automatically straighten that out for me. Okay, and it looks like it might be popping through a little bit right here. I'm holding the middle mouse button to pan. So what we can do is I'm going to just select the face. I'm going to hit Control L. And I'm... Hey, is it popping through? Doesn't look it from there. I'm going to push it back just slightly. Okay, we've been in edit mode this entire time. And we're actually going to go into object mode. So what we're going to do is we're going to hit Tab. Just because it's easier to do this next part as a, as a separate object, then we can always, if we wanted to, we could connect the objects together. Like this whole thing, all of those pieces inside of this ship so far are created or considered one object. Anything that's in there, even if it's separate and it's in that object, is considered one object. So now we're in object mode, so now we're going to make a separate object. So we're going to hit, see where the 3D cursor is at. Wherever the 3D cursor is at is when, where a new object comes into blenders. When, blenders. when it shift C to put it right in the center. Then we're going to hit Shift A to bring up our Add menu, which is generally how you add things into Blender. One of the new things was added to Blender recently is if you don't, if you want to do it another way, right here is there's actually a Create menu, so you can hit Shift A or you can actually, you know, come over here, use the Create menu, and you can actually we need a uh, a cylinder, so you can select cylinder here and you know have all the stuff right there, so. Yeah, you know, this it makes it a little bit easier for you, so you don't necessarily have to remember the uh, the shift A. Though I still think it's best for you to remember the shortcuts. But just so you know, this is here, and it has all your options there. Anyway, when you add a, a cylinder, you know when you first bring a cylinder in, if you look here, there's options for your cylinder. And right now, this this cylinder has 32 uh, vertices. We don't need that many, so we're going to left click. And we're going to change this to 12, and then the cylinder will will change to 12. Now, it's important. When this cylinder first comes in, you don't want to click around outside the cylinder because you'll lose your ability to, to modify the cylinder. So now that we have it down to 12, what we're going to do is hit Tab to go into the cylinder object. So now we're inside of the, the, the cylinder object space. Like So anything made in here would be part of this you know, a, a cylinder space here that we have. So what we're going to do is take a manipulator, move this up. We're going to hit... S to scale on the Y axis to make this bigger. We're now going to hit Alt S, which is an interesting type of scale, and it kind of like makes things skinnier or bulkier. Uh, so we're just going to push our mouse wheel up, kind of make that pull a little bit skinnier, zoom in. We're going to take a manipulator and push it to about here. Take it up about, hmm, it's pretty easy to adjust this thing once we. Have an so I'm going to make it a little bit thicker. I'm going to hold Alt S, make it a little teeny bit thicker, about like that thick. Okay, what we're going to do now is we're going to add a loop cut to here. So we're going to hit Control, and I'm zooming back so you can see the loop cut is going to come in pretty high. I'm going to hit Control Space to take away that manipulator. I'm going to hit Control L, I'm at, sorry, Control R, normal way we bring in a loop cut. Left click to lock in one time. See it there? It's small as I got now. I'm pulling it down. I'll zoom in as soon as I lock it in again. So it's locked in. See that? I brought it in. I moved it down. So it's about there, right? So now with that loop cut there, what you want to do is uh, you're going to, because it's a loop cut here, now we should be able to select this whole bottom of uh, faces here. So we'll go to face select. We'll hold alt. And you can see we selected that whole bottom of faces there. So what we're going to do now is we're going to hit E to extrude. We're going to left click the lock and we create a new geometry. And now uh, what we're going to do is Actually, before we do that, see, if, if, if we're dealing with a separate object and this gets in the way of the boat we're working on, though this is considered a part of the boat, what we can do is we can go to our 
or uh, number keypad and right next to number lock we can hit the backspace key and this puts this in local mode and what local mode is it allows you to focus just on the object you're working with sometimes it makes it easier so I'm just rolling the middle mouse button I'm gonna hold shift in the middle mouse button to pan I'm gonna roll in again I'm gonna select this bottom right here I'm gonna hit X to delete it and then now I'm going to hold alt and select the face, so select all these faces. We already extruded this, so there's already a new geometry here, though it doesn't look like it. So we can scale that new geometry. So we're gonna scale it just like that. Actually, I'm gonna hit, sorry, Control Z. I'm gonna do a, a slightly different scale. We're gonna hit Alt S to scale. All right, so we're gonna scale like that. And then we'll hit Control Space to bring our manipulator back and we'll uh, you know, push down just like that, just to give this like a little bit of a base. We have this ge geometry here that we don't need, so we're still on face select, so we can hold Alt and select all these faces here and hit X and uh, delete these faces. My, there you go, no milk cow. If you're looking at this, I took those extra vertices and I deleted them out because we're not going to need them. So I did learn. Anyway, I'm, I'm going to hold. Uh, I'm going to hit uh, uh, space. I'm going to hit that backslash key next to number lock again to bring the ship back. I'm going to roll with my middle mouse button. Now I'm going to hold shift and, and the middle mouse button to pan. I actually don't want this quite this high. So I'm going with this face select on. I'm going to select this top right here. I'm going to push down about that height. I'm going to hit control L to select this whole thing. I'm going to push this down for the bottom just a little bit right there. Okay, now what we're going to do is we have our 3D cursor there. So what we're going to do is we're going to hit uh, we're going to hit shift A we're going to bring a, another cube in so we're still inside of this cylinder object we can, we can bring a cube in here so here's a cube we need to take our manipulator we're going to move it up we're going to bring it on to uh, this manipulator I mean sorry this cylinder we're going to hit S to scale on the Z axis we're going to scale it to about like that I'm going to hit S to scale on the x-axis. And now what I'm going to do is hit... Um, I'm going to hit W to get to subdivide. This brings up our specials menu. I'm going to select subdivide to give us some uh, geometry here. And what I'm going to do is select edges. I'm going to hit control space to temporarily take away that manipulator. I'm going to select these edges right here by holding shift. Hit control space to bring the manipulator back, and I'm just going to pull out this way just slightly. I'm going to hit control uh, L, push this just this way a little bit. Now I'm holding my middle mouse button just to zoom around a little bit. I'm going to give this a little more height in there. Or maybe I will make this a little bit taller. I'm going to select the space. The face select, I'm going to select right here and make this a little bit taller, actually. And uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to select a one face right here. I'm going to hit Control L. I'm going to hit Shift D, which gives us a duplicate of this. I'm going to take the manipulator and can't see the duplicate right here, but as soon as I pull it, there it goes. And I'm actually going to hit S to scale to make this a little bit smaller. Take the manipulator and push this back right here. Okay, now what I'm going to do is I'm going to hit uh, with this selected here, this, I'm going to hold shift, I'm going to hit, hold shift, 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 or, or I'm, I'm holding shift, sorry, and I'm just clicking these faces and I'm just trying to grab a piece of everything that's here. Now I'm going to hit control L to grab everything and now what I'm going to do is hit shift D to duplicate this whole object and I'm just going to pull this whole object this way. Okay, what we're going to actually do now is we're going to hit tab to go back in the object mode. We're going to select on the main part of the ship. We're going to hit tab to go into edit mode of the ship. And I'm just going to make some slight modifications to get this design like I you know, want it to kind of look. So I'm going to select these faces right here. I'm going to zoom in with the middle mouse button. I'm going to shift and the middle mouse button to pan. I'm going to hold shift and select all of these faces here. And with these faces, I'm actually just going to pull up some. I want that. You know what, I'm not sure if I do. 
Eh, I think I just want. Let's see. I just want to grab. Oh, look at that. that I wasn't sure if that would work. Yes, yeah, so I just want that top loop right there. So I, I'm on face select. I, I held L Alt and then selected this top right here. Now I'm going to hold Shift and just select these faces individually. I'm going to hit Control Space. Temporary take away the manipulator. I'm going to zoom in with the middle mouse button. I'm just going to select all of these phases here. So now we have that whole thing. And I just want to pull this higher. So I'm going to hit Control Space, bring the manipulator back. With all of this selected here, I'm just going to pull this up higher like that. I'm just looking at it now. Okay. The reason why I did that is I actually want this to kind of sit right in here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to hit Tab because we're in the object of the main ship. I'm going to select back on here and then I'm going to hit Tab to go into the edit mode of this object. I'm going to select the face on here. I'm going to hit Control L which lets us grab that whole entire object there and I'm just going to push down like this and I'm actually going to just uh, I'm actually going to See, I messed up here because I was not messed up. I mean, basically, the way I, I like to do things, you get the basic design. But see, I have these doors set up here. So obviously, this can't sit there. So now what I'm going to do is hold Shift to grab a face there. I'm holding the middle mouse button to zoom out. Not holding, rolling the middle mouse button to zoom out. I'm going to select here, here, and I'm going to hit Control L. And I'm going to move this entire thing forward off of those doors. You can kind of see, like, when I'm maybe see what I'm trying to do here, about to do. I'm going to select here. I'm going to hit Control L. I'm going to move this up slightly. I'm going to hit S to scale on the X axis. Take that out to about there. I'm going to hit S to scale on the Y axis. Take this out a little bit. Yep, that's what I wanted. So I'm going to hit Control L on this side and actually bring this. Do I want to bring that down there? I'm going to hit Control Z. I'll leave it. This one I want to bring down. I'm going to hit Control L just to grab the entire thing after selecting the face. And I'm going to hit S to scale to make this a little bit bigger. Okay, actually, what we're going to do now is we're going to go I'm holding Shift and the middle mouse button to pan. Just rolling the middle mouse button to zoom. I'm going to hit A to deselect. With the face select on right here, I'm going to select right here. And here's the manipulator getting in the way. I'm going to hit control space to temporarily take it out of the way. Where's my shortcut keys at? There we go. I'm going to hold shift and select this face right here. Uh, oh, there's not a mirror modifier. Okay, on this one. Uh, so. That's actually because this ship has a mirror modifier on it. One of the things that we should do, they can get you into trouble and hit one on the number keypad. This takes us directly in front. See, my 3D cursor is right there. What I'm actually going to do is hit Z to go transparent. I'm actually going to say you're not confused. I'm going to hit a, a number slash backspace. So you can just see just the local view. I'm going to hit B while on face select. I'm going to grab all of this half right here, just like we did in the beginning. The tops actually have to be deleted for this to work. So I'm going to hit A to deselect. I'm going to go Z to be transparent. I'm going to hit X to delete these top faces there. I'm going to hit 1 to go in the front view again. And basically what's going on is the ship has a mirror modifier. We're eventually most likely going to join this to the ship. So if you plan to join it to the, to the ship, uh, because it has a mirror modifier on there, if we take this and we don't... Uh, if we take this and it, it doesn't have a mirror modifier on it or it's not chopped in half, it will try to mirror this and it'll make duplicate faces. So all we're going to do is very simple. We're going to hit Z, we're going to hit B, we're going to select this half right here. We're going to hit X, delete the faces. We're going to apply a mirror modifier just like before. We're going to select clipping, mirror modifier, and now it almost should look like it did before. It's just totally perfectly mirrored. We're going to hit a... Uh, uh, the backslash key to bring back the ship now we'll hit Z and you know you really barely can tell the difference and for these uh, tops we delete or for this top where we delete the faces we'll just or the face right here and the face there we're just going to edge select we'll hold alt we'll select the edge we'll hit F 
Same thing here. We'll hit A to deselect there. We'll hold Alt, select the edge. We'll hit F. Okay, now what we're going to do is we will hold face select, and the mirror modifier actually makes it easier for us because, you know, even for saving clicks, we select here, and now we automatically select the other side. I'm going to hit um, Shift D. Um, and then I'm, what I did, I just duplicated the geometry, except this time I'm hitting Control Space to bring the manipulator, and I'm pushing that new geometry forward. I'm going to hit S to scale on the X axis to make this new geometry a little bit wider. I'm now going to hit E to extrude on the Y axis. You can still see our guidelines, you know, guiding the way for us. I'm going to hit Control L to grab that entire. Uh, piece right there. I'm going to test the scale on the x-axis make it a little bit wider. That's the scale on the x-axis bring it in a little bit. Okay, so I'm going to hit a S to scale period. That's about it's good like that. Make it touch like that front those front polygons again. Now I'm just going to hit shift D, duplicate this, put it here. And hit Shift D, duplicate it, push it back, put it here. And because we, well, whenever you can, if you can dupe, make something and duplicate it, it's a, it's nice the fact of how easily you can, you know, add detail to something just by duplicating it and moving it around. Okay, what we're going to do now is we're going to hit uh, Shift A. We're going to bring in a plane. Okay, we've just brought in a plane, so if I move this up, uh, there's the plane, except there is a problem that I almost did. So I'm going to show you guys this. I, I, wanted to, I wanted this to be in the center here, and one of the things is we have a mirror modifier on here. So if I click here, you see how everything disappears, but the plane doesn't. It's because I made the plane at the center. I brought it in into a mirror modifier object, and I brought it into the center. Now, it should be only half because it's not it's going to cause problems so what we're going to do is actually we're going to hit x to delete this plane now the 3d cursor is directly in the center we don't want it in the center because the mirror modifiers is uh we don't want it to come in at the center because the mirror modifier is affecting everything from the center so we're going to select over here wherever the 3d cursor is at is where your object comes in we're going to hit shift a and then we're going to bring the plane in over here and now you can see when i brought it in over here plane came, came in over there with R, R to rotate in the X angle 90 degrees. And now what we'll do is as we push together these planes, let me, did they join yet? Yeah, they did. Let me hit Control Z. I'm gonna move it up in the air so you can see. So the plane came in over here and it's how we want it to come in because here's a mirrored object. So it's mirroring like it's supposed to. So now when we push it together, now it'll join. And then as soon as I click off of it and then click onto it again, you'll see the clipping will keep it together. And that, that's what we want. So now that we have this, uh, we just dodged, uh, could have been a pretty annoying stake right there. So we're going to push this down to about here. We're going to hit S to scale on the Z axis. And uh, what we're going to do is, let's hit S to scale on the Z axis yet again. So what we're going to do is I'm going to hold shift in the middle mouse button so you can see. Let me hit end to take away that menu. I'm going to hit, hit control R. I'm going to roll two times. Now what I'm going to do is hit control R to put another loop cut in here. Just like there. Left click to lock in. I'm now going to select these vertices. Uh, I'm going to hit control space to take away the manipulator. I'm going to select these three vertices here. I'm going to hit Alt O to turn on connected proportional editing. I'm going to hit G and Y to pull forward. And uh, I'm just going to roll the mouse wheel for my proportional edit. And see what the, the Alt, the this proportional edit, the connected proportional editing, what it does is it allows you to do proportional editing, but it only affects what you are touching or connected to now. So it's it's good in the thing, because I didn't want it to pull these vertices here. So anyway, with those three vertices selected, I can hit Control L. I want to hit O, which turned it back to regular proportional editing. I'm going to hit O again. Whoops. O again to turn it all the way off. And hit Control Space to bring back my manipulator. I'm going to move this here. Actually, about there 
and I'm actually going to pull this in a little bit. I'm going to go to uh, face select, top select the top of this right here, pull this up about that height. I'm then going to hold uh, shift, select the faces for these to grab this object here. I'm going to hit control. Whoops. It's like here and here. I'm going to hit control L just to grab there. I'm going to pull this up to about here. I'm also going to select a face here and here. I'm going to hit control L to pull this up to about here. And now I'm going to make some readjustments over here. I'm going to hold the middle mouse button and turn. I'm going to hold shift in the middle mouse button to pan, roll in with the middle mouse button to zoom in. I'm going to pull this up so it's about the other height right there. I'm going to select one face on this cell. I'm going to hit control L, shift D to duplicate it and pull it straight back. I'm then going to hold uh, Select the face, hold shift, hit control L, move this up to about here. I'm going to hit shift D to duplicate this whole thing right here and push that duplication down to about there. Actually, I'm going to hit control L. Um, I don't need this now. I'm going to delete that whole thing right there. Oh, wait a second. Hit control Z. I do need that. I'm going to select this right here. I'm going to hit control L. I'm going to hit shift D. Pull this down to about there. Yeah. And then I'm going to hit shift D. Push this forward to about here. Uh, maybe it's too far away. That's fine. Okay, now what I'm going to do is I'm going to select here. I'm going to hit Control L. I'm going to hit Shift D. I'm going to hit R to rotate on the X angle like this. I'm going to hit S to actually no. I'm going to sorry. I'm going to hit Control Z. Bring that back. Let's move it like this. Hit S to scale on the Z angle like that. Now I'm going to hit Alt S, scale it to about that to make it fatter. I'm going to hit control uh, X and it's important to know that we're scaling that this is mirrored so you know you can like if you start pushing and pulling this away from the center you'll have a problem. So you'll have a problem because this is a mirrored object. Anyway we're going to push this forward about here That you know, kind of like there. Let's take R to routine the x axis. S to scale a little bit. I think I'll grab the faces here and maybe pull this way and up slightly. I'm actually going to hit. Uh, grab the faces here, 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 on all of this stuff right here. Hit Control L, and actually move this back a little bit like that. I'm gonna hit Tab to go in Object Mode, go into the Boat. Hit Tab to go into Edit Mode of the Boat. I'm going to select right here, all this geometry right here. I'm actually going to pull this way a little bit. I'm going to put a loop cut right here. And I'm going to select the faces here. I'm going to hit E to extrude, left click to lock in, and I'm going to, uh, whoops, wait a second, I'm sorry, I'm going to control Z, I'm going to select these faces here without a loop cut and just push down a little bit like that. I'm going to select the faces here and I'm going to hit E to extrude on the Z axis. 
Yeah, I'm gonna eat through on the Z axis. I'm gonna pull them straight up on the Z axis. Then I'm gonna hit S to scale and it Z axis zero degrees to flatten that out. It's like kind of like that. Okay, what else I'm gonna do is I'm gonna hit tab to go back in object mode. Okay, what we're gonna do now, we're actually gonna bring these uh basically if you if you look right here the cylinder is the cells and everything else the ship is this cube right here so what I'm going to do is is connect the, the cells to the ship and uh, how I'm going to do that is I am going to the first thing you want to do if you're you're you have a both of these have a mirrored object on so that the ship matter of fact, let me double click here and name this ship or as a matter of fact I'll name it main ship all right, so this has a mirror modifier on it. This also has a mirror modifier on it. I'm gonna join the, this to this to make this one object. But before I do that, I wanna turn off the mirror modifier here because when this object attaches to this object, uh, anything that comes into this object will be mirrored also. So you don't want double geometry. So what I'm gonna do is with this selected, the cylinder, which is all the cells and everything, I'm actually going to, and then you can see right there, see everything disappears. What I'm actually going to do is hit X to take off the mirror modifier, so it's only half of the cells and everything. And then what I'm going to do is, first with the cylinder first selected there, I'm going to hold Shift. I'm going to select the main ship, right? So first here, I held Shift and I selected the main ship. Now ship. Now I'm going to hit Control J. And now this is joined into this object. And as soon as it was joined, the mirror modifier that was still on the ship applied itself to half of the geometry that we just took the other mirror modifier off so now when we get tab now we can see the cells and everything in uh in here so in here i'm going to grab this when i hit control l pull this back a little bit position this down okay one of the things we want to do now is there needs to be a way to get up to here to deal with these uh Sales there also needs to be a way to get up to the second platform. So we're actually going to hit tab to go into. Actually, we're going to uh, hit tab to go back into edit mode. We're going to select right here in edge. We're going to hit shift S to bring up our snap to menu. We're going to hit cursor to selected. Now that put our cursor right here. So remember, wherever we bring something in, it comes in where this cursor is at. The only reason why I put this snap to here is so that I want to bring in an object and I want it to be generally around this area. So now I'm going to hit tab to go in object mode. I'm going to hit shift A to bring up a uh, uh, I'm going to mesh. I'm going to bring in a plane. So, so there's my plane. So now my plane is a separate object. You can see it right here. I'm going to hit tab to go into the plane. I'm going to hit R to rotate on the x-axis. And the only reason why I'm doing this is I want something non-symmetrical. And right now I like having the mirror modifier applied to the ship. So if I added a plane into the ship, it would add it on both sides. I didn't want that. So I'm doing it out here to make it symmetrical. And we'll just leave it here until we apply the mirror modifier to the ship. So right now I'm just man maneuvering this with the manipulator. I'm going to hit Control L. And it's just going to be like some steps to allow us to go up to here somebody some at the scale on the Z axis to make it a little bit taller and now we're going to hit a uh, control R to put in loop cuts about that many loop cuts no distinct amount now we're gonna hit select faces and uh, we're going to uh, I'm sorry. Hit Control Z. Uh, is that what I want? Yes, that is what I want. All right, we're gonna hit A. I'm gonna hit E to extrude to give this some um, little bit of thickness. Now, after having that thickness, I'm gonna select the face select again. I apologize, people. I'm gonna select just these kind of wrong things here. I'm going to hit E to extrude and just bring them out a little bit. And you can imagine this just being like steps to get up to like this level right here. 
I'm going to hit control L to grab all that geometry right there. And I'm going to hit, that's the scale in the x-axis to make it a little bit more narrow. So it's own, its own separate object for now, but I'm just, you know, there's got to be a way for people to get up there easily. I'm going to hit S to scale in the x-axis. I know that's not the best view. Hold the middle mouse button just to turn my view. So there, there we go. That's good. All right, so now... We're going to hit tab to go back in object mode, select back on the main ship by clicking it, hit tab to go into edit mode for the main ship. Let's make some ways to get up to here. And what we can do to do that is uh, we're going to, with face select, we'll select the face here. And what we're going to do is hit uh, shift D to duplicate that face. We'll actually push it here. You can see the mirror it on the other side. We're going to hit S to scale in the Z axis. So we'll take it nice and long down. We'll kind of push it down into place at S to scale in the Z axis again. And it's basically I'm thinking of a thing to climb up here. So we just want to kind of put that in place. And another way other than hitting scale to adjust these, we can hit the edge select, grab this edge here and then just push down like that actually yeah we wanted to go all the way up here so what we're going to do is now what we're going to do is we're going to hit uh, control R and you see the loop cut preview right there so we're just going to roll this up about like that, no exact number. Then we're going to hit Control R again and uh, we'll take it oh, just like this. Left click to lock it in. Then we're going to hit Control L to select everything. We're going to hit Control B and just do a slight pull until you see that. And with that still highlighted, highlighted you're going to hit Shift D left click to lock in and then you're going to take your manipulator and just pull it away from the other material here so now this this that's this plane is left behind the subdivided plane you're going to hit control L you're going to hit X to bring up your delete menu select faces and delete that <coughs> excuse me you're going to select uh, part of this new geometry we just made hit control L you're then going to hit E to extrude no axis and just bring it out just slightly I'll zoom. I'm rolling in with the middle mouse button so you can see. And uh, yeah, about like that. Maybe even a little bit thinner. So with the face is still selected, we'll just push it in slightly like that. Okay, then you're going to hit Control L to select all of the geometry there. I'm turning with my middle mouse button. I'm going to take the manipulator and just push in to it's touching the side there. Okay, now with this still selected, we're going to hit Shift D to duplicate this geometry. I'm going to right click just so it snaps back into its place. We're going to take the manipulator and move it into place over here. And for this, uh, what I guess we'll do is we'll just hit Z. And uh, how do I want to do this? Um, I think we're actually going to deselect all of this geometry up there. And hit Z to see where this is at. And we'll hit uh, C for paint select and we're going to deselect this right here and we'll hit Z to see what we have there and then we're going to hit X to delete the uh, let's go to phases here so with this geometry here uh, we just use paint select to deselect so we hit C for paint select and if you hold the middle mouse button it, it erases so what we're going to do now is hit X and we're going to delete these faces right here hit Z because we just needed the uh, geometry that was you know, over top here
Okay, so I'm going to roll in with my middle mouse button. I'm going to hold shift in the middle mouse button to pan up. I'm going to select one face here. I'm going to hit control L. Then I'm going to hit shift D. Left click to lock in. Take my manipulator and take that geometry and move it up here. And just position this up here. Holding shift in the middle mouse button to pan. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to hit 3 on the number keyboard. We're in right orthographic view. I'm holding shift in the middle mouse button to pan. I'm going to hit Z to go transparent. <clears throat> I'm going to hit A to deselect. I'm going to hit B to box select. And grab all of this right here. Hit Z to go solid. And I'm going to hit X to bring up the delete menu and delete faces there. I'm now going to select the face here, hit Control L. I'm just going to push this back to here slightly. Just move it out this way. Eh, right here. So you got to look around in 3D because it looked like I was on top of where I wanted it to be, where I wanted it sitting there, and I, I wasn't. And what we'll actually do here is hit S to scale on the Y axis, and instead of cutting it, we'll just shrink it down some and place it so it's right in there like that. And I'm going to hit A to deselect. As far as these holes right there, I'm just going to go to my vertices select and just select these four vertices and hit F for fill. Let me hit Control L. Take the manipulator and move this up slightly. Just so I can see the four vertices here, I'm going to go hit A to deselect, select these four vertices. Select the four and hit F for fill. Then now you're just going to hold your middle mouse button, turn to the side. I'm going to roll the middle mouse button, zoom back. Holding shift in the middle mouse button to pan. And uh, what we're going to do is just grab part of this ladder piece here, you're going to go to face select, you're going to select right here, you're going to hit shift D. You're going to take your manipulator and pull this out to the side just a little bit. We're going to hit R to rotate on the X axis 90 degrees. Then we're going to hit uh, E to extrude no axis. Hit control L to grab the entire uh, piece of geometry there. We're just going to push this down forward and uh, I line it up with this pole right here about like that I'm gonna select the front part front face there and just push this out make it go through like that I'm actually gonna hit uh, control L to grab the entire thing and hit S to scale on the x-axis a little bit push it forward just slightly nope oh, that's two that's more now want it okay I'm gonna grab this face right here I'm gonna push this in a little okay I guess that's like how it was in the beginning all right so what I'm gonna do is select this front of uh, face right here. I'm going to take the manipulator and push out just a little. I'm going to hit shift D to duplicate. Take the manipulator and push it out a little. I'm going to hit S to scale. Uh, then S to scale on the X axis. E to extrude on the Y axis. I'm going to hit control L to grab the entire thing. And I'm just going to have it come back and uh, come back and lightly touch the front of that to make it look like they're connected. And now with that, those still selected, I'm going to hold shift and select this face here. I'm going to hit control L. I'm going to duplicate this by hitting shift D. I'm going to take the manipulator and push it straight down. I want it about halfway into the next cell as far as like halfway down in height. I am going to hit a S to scale on the Y axis and pull it back some. I'm going to hit S to scale on the Y axis, so it's pushing through the front slightly. I'm going to take the manipulator, 
push it up. Uh, I'll go here and I, I just want this to come in through sales there. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to grab this back face here. Just take the manipulator and push it in a little bit. Okay, now I'm going to, with the face select on, I'm going to select here. I'm going to hold shift to select here. I'm going to select here and here. Then I'm, whoops, here. I'm going to hit Control L to grab both of them. I'm going to hit Shift D to duplicate them and take the manipulator and push straight back. I'm going to hold Shift and the middle mouse button to pan. Zoom in with the, by rolling the middle mouse button. I'm going to select this face right here, take my manipulator and just drag right back to there. Um, this top, I'm just going to select that. The face here, the face here. I'm going to hit Control L to grab the whole thing. I'm going to push this back like that. Now I'm going to hold the middle mouse button to turn. Hold Shift in the middle mouse button to pan. Select this face right here. Take the manipulator and pull straight back. Cool. Eh, about here. And now I'm going to roll with the middle mouse button in. I'm actually going to grab it right here, the face right there. I'm going to hit Control L. I'm going to hit Shift D. I'm going to pull this straight back to about here. I'm going to hit R to rotate on the Z axis 90 degrees. Push this out a little bit. I'm going to hit S to scale Just slightly. Hit S to scale on the X axis. I'm going to grab this face right here and just pull that way just slightly. And I'm going to hit E to extrude to create new geometry. Left click to lock in. I'm going to hit S to scale. I'm going to pull out slightly and then I'm going to hit a. Uh, trying to get a view so you can see. I'm going to hold shift in the middle mouse button to pan and zoom in. And I'm going to hit E to extrude out. I'm going to hit S to scale in just slightly. And I'm going to uh, hit Control L. I'm going to hold shift, hit shift D. Just push this straight down to right there. Yeah, I'm trying to make it look like there's something securing this to this uh, piece right here. And I'm going to hit shift D again. Pull this straight back with that piece right there. I'm going to hit shift D and uh, push this up right here. Okay, now what I want is I want like a boats normally have like a dragon, a griffin, eagle thing. I want that right here. And rather than modeling that out, the easy way for us, the easiest way for us to do that is to go out of Blender for a second and bring it back in. So I'm going to hit tab to go in object mode. Okay, this is Inkscape. Inkscape is an open source alternative to Adobe Illustrator that is freely available for download. Once you're in, uh, once you have Inkscape open or other installed, uh, you can look for Dragon Vector. This is the Dragon Vector that I'm going to use. I just put in free Dragon uh, Vectors. You can use this. You can you know try to find this one to use this one. Or you can use your own. And uh, once you have it, what you're going to do is you're going to go File, Import. Go to the file that you save your Dragon Vector in. You're going to open it. You want to select Link. You're then just going to grab it, position it in this square right here. You're then going to go to uh, Path, Trace Bitmap. This should pop up. And these are the settings you want. You want to have a, a check mark in uh, where it says Options. You're going to select there. You want to have a check mark where it says Smooth Corners, Optimize Paths. You want all of these the same as did you see here how I have it set up 
you're going to select mode and you want to have it set for scans to and then grease and then this is the bitmap so what you're going to do is you're going to select update and then ok and then what's going to happen is you can push this off to the side so this this first part that I grab is actually my uh, my new vector this is actually the old so I'm going to select this here this is the original that I'm selecting this is a bitmap matter of fact if you get confused if you're like you know they look so similar how do you know a whole control when I zoom up you see that right there how that's uh, you know, pixelated right uh, I'm gonna delete this one by hitting delete on my keyboard I'm gonna select this one I'm gonna drag this over here and now when I zoom in you see the difference no pixelation so okay now with that done Oh, I'm, there is another actually important, very important thing. Uh, you wanted to make sure that uh, when you select it, it should. If you saw my screen, you want to make sure that this you have removed background selected in these options. Okay, in Inkscape, you want to zoom in and out. You can just hold Control and roll your middle mouse button. You'll zoom in or out. Uh, now, what you're going to do is you're going to uh, Go to file, save as, and you want to save this as a, it's normally the default is an Inkscape SVG. You want to save this as a plain SVG. So you're going to select save. Okay, once it's saved, you're going to come back to Blender. You're going to go to file, import, SVG, or scalable vector graphics. You're going to select your file. You're going to select import. SVG. SVGs tend to come in very small, so if you do that and you don't see anything, don't be alarmed by that. Select curve here. Uh, you might want to zoom back by rolling your mouse wheel back. You're going to grab your manipulator. You're going to push straight forward. You're going to hit S to scale to scale up your uh, your vector graphic, your scalable vector graphic. You're then going to hit object, transform, and you're going to put a uh, origin to geometry. Now you're gonna you're gonna push R to rotate on the x-axis 90 degrees. Left click to lock in. Then you're gonna do R to rotate on the z-axis 90 degrees. Left click to lock in. You're then gonna hit S to scale it up to the size you want it to be. And we actually can select the ship. Hit Shift S. Cursor to select it. Select the scalable. Uh, vector graphic and hit shift s uh, selection cursor offset just to make sure it's directly in the center remember because it doesn't have a, a mirror modifier on it it's fine us doing this we'll take this up we we'll hit r to rotate on the x-axis to position it a little bit maybe like that now with the uh, the SVG Select it. We're going to select this curves option right here. We're just going to take the resolution up to like four. Now what we're going to do is right now it's a scalable vector graphic. We don't necessarily want it being uh, left as that. So what we're going to do is we're going to go to object, uh, convert to mesh, mesh from curve basically and this turns it into a mesh and now when you look here you can see that it still says curve but uh, uh, it's actually a mesh now so now we actually can go into edit mode inside of it you're gonna hit A to select all of this right here and you can see that it has a whole lot of uh, vertices and that in there so what you're gonna do now is you're gonna go to mesh clean up and you're gonna go to limited dissolve and that just makes it calm down a whole lot uh, then with that, you're going to hit E to extrude on the x-axis. Pull it over to the side. You're going to hit, just that we're just giving it, you know, some thickness now. Then we're going to hit uh, A to select the whole thing again. We're going to go to mesh, clean up, limit to dissolve yet again, just in case to see if we can get more cleanup in there. Okay, now with it still selected, we're going to hit uh, control N. 
just to make sure we don't have any problems with normals. Control N just lets you recalculate normals and we'll just position this for the most part in the center there. I'm going to R to rotate on the X axis. Tilt it forward just slightly more and position it like that. You push it up so it looks like it's coming out of here a little bit. Okay, now we're going to do some minor rigging as we move along. So we're going to select a ship. We're going to hit tab. We're going to select, go to the face select, select right here. I'm going to hold my middle mouse button to turn a little bit, the view. I'm going to hit Y to uh, separate this face right here. This allows me to pull this out like this. <coughs> Excuse me. I'm going to hit E to extrude. No axis. Just let it ride along its own axis. I am going to uh, select this face right here. I'm going to hold shift in the middle mouse button to pan. I'm going to hit shift S to activate my snap to menu. Do cursor to selected. I'm now going to hit control L and then P to bring up my separate menu. Now before I separated by Y to just separate this from the ship, but it's still, it's still in the, uh, it's separated from the ship, but it's, it's, uh, it was still, part of the object. This this separate with P will make this an actual separate object, which you need for animation. So we're going to choose separate by selection. Now we're going to hit tab. You can see right here, this is the main ship. This is what this turned into. So we'll double click here. I'll name this Cannon Door. And now what we're going to do that it's its own separate object is we're going to go object, transform, and then, uh, whoops, sorry, ob uh, object transform. And then we're going to do origin to 3D cursor. And uh, see how this popped out? Because I forgot that I had a modifier on here. So I'm going to select the wrench. Here's the mirror modifier. I'm just going to X out there and that'll solve that problem. Okay, and with the 3D cursor there, we're going to hit Shift A. We're going to bring in an empty. An empty is just a non renderable object. And we're going to bring in a cube. We're going to hit S to scale. Scale this empty down like that. We're going to select the cannon door. We're going to hold shift. And then uh, select the uh, empty second. The order is important. Then you're going to hit control P. Uh, set parent to object. You're going to choose object keep transform. You're then going to hit the end menu. <coughs> Excuse me. And you're going to go to rotation. You're going to lock your X rotation and your Z rotation and just leave your Y rotation, uh, you know, open. So now when we hit R to rotate on the Y axis, we should be able to rotate it like that. I'm going to right click to get it back to its original position. I'm going to hit in to take away this. Oh. Get your keys. Uh, all right, so I'm going to roll my, hold my middle mouse button to turn to the side. And then I'm just going to take this empty and just push this right here. And you can see that uh, if we want to have this door open, we can just hit R to rotate on the Y axis and have you know door open. So let's leave it open like that for now. We're going to select back on the ship. Okay, we're going to hit tab to go into edit mode. We're going to select these doors right here. We're going to hit control L. So we make sure we select the whole part of the door. We're going to hit shift D and then raise these up. We'll lift this up just straight up above the ship for now. I'm going to select, whoops, right click, get off of that. I'm going to select right here. I'm going to hit control L and I'm actually going to push this down with the manipulator. And I'm going to try to line it up right here and what I'm going to do is hit S to scale on the X axis purposely let it come through so it helps me you know set this up I'm going to hit S to scale on the Y axis to make this about the size of this cannon door 
I'm going to hit S to scale on the X axis to pull it in. Okay, I'm going to hold the middle mouse button and just look inside the ship. I'm actually going to hit S to scale on the Y axis. And I'll use this ship. S to scale on the Y axis. And I'll see where this pops out. Okay. So now I hit S to scale on the Y axis. I'm just using the fact that it's popping out of the ship to see where it's at. So now I'll just scale it to its back end of the ship. And that'll be like our second floor below where our doors are at. And you can see it popping out right here. We'll just hit S to scale on the X axis to, to make sure it's you know, inside. Okay, we're going to zoom out. We're going to face select these doors right here. We're going to hit Control L. Oops. Control L. Push these doors back in. Somebody said to me, why do you say Control L instead of L? Because uh, sometimes for whatever reason, it seems like I don't, I don't know if it's in my mind or what that L sometimes selects everything and sometimes it doesn't but control L uh, whenever I select the vertice edge or a face control L appears to select everything anyway uh, <clears throat> what we're gonna do here is we're gonna select this face again hit control L and uh, we're gonna hit P to separate this make it its own separate object so we're going to choose the separate menu pops up. We're going to choose by selection. Now we can see here, we'll name this uh, cargo doors. Okay, and now we're going to hit a tab to go into here. We're going to, we'll apply the mirror modifier. Whoops, we'll go back in it to uh, object mode. We'll apply the mirror modifier on there. And uh, now what we're going to do is we are going to, um, we'll select here. And I think I could pull that up. Let's hit control. It's a whole separate object. We'll hit A to select all of it. We'll pull it out of the boat. And uh, what, what I want to do is I want to select all of this right here. Like in the bottom there and the bottom here. What I want to do is hit a P to make this its own separate object. So here's Cargo Doors 1, so we'll name this uh, Cargo Doors dot L. And then Cargo Doors, we want to temporarily make them disappear. Okay, good. So I'm gonna hit a. I'm gonna get an edge select. I'm gonna select right here this whole loop. I'm gonna hit Control F. I'm gonna get a grid fill, and that does a nice job filling in that grid right there. Uh, and now I'm going to hit Tab to go back in object mode. I'm gonna select cargo doors. I'll double click on them. I'll put name these dot R. I'll Unhide these. I'll hide dot L. Go into tab mode, and with edge still selected, I'm going to select this edge right here. Hit Control F, and then grid fill. Okay. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to select this edge right here. I'm going to hit Shift A. Uh, whoops. Sorry. I'm going to hit Shift S. Cursor to selected. Okay, now with that, I'm going to hit tab to go in object mode. I'm going to hit, I'm going to go to object. I'm going to select transform and then origin to 3D cursor. I'm now going to put, hit shift uh, A. I'm going to go to empty cube. Whoops, control Z, sorry. Shift A, empty cube. I'm going to hit S to scale this down. 
you know what? I'm gonna hit. Uh, I'm actually gonna hit. Uh, I, I just right click to do a temporary undo. I'm gonna hit S. Uh, point ten. And that point ten doing scale point ten just made it ten percent of what it originally was. This is fine for me. Uh, so what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna select here. I'm gonna hold shift and I'm gonna select the em I'm gonna select the empty. I'm gonna hit control P and this is gonna do object keep transform. So now it should be should be that when I hit R to rotate on the Y axis that these you know it lets me rotate these. I'm gonna right click for that and I'm gonna just do the same thing on the other side. Uh, We'll name this hinge.r. All right, so now I'm going to bring back the doors for the other side. I'm going to hide the. I'm going to hit this plus to make the uh, other doors show up. I'm going to hit this I to make them disappear. Now I'm going to select the cargo doors.l. I'm going to hit tab to go into edit mode for them. I'm going to, with edge select, I'm going to select this edge right here. I'm going to hit shift S, cursor to selected. I'm going to hit tab to go into object mode. I'm going to go to object, transform, origin to 3D cursor. I'm now going to hit shift A. I'm going to bring in an empty. That is a cube. And then I'm going to hit S, point, one, O. Left click to lock in. I'm now going to select the cargo doors dot L. I'm going to se select the... I'm going to hit control, control space to temporarily turn off the manipulator. I just roll in with the middle mouse button. I'm holding shift and middle mouse button in the pan. I'm going to hold shift and select this empty. Now I'm going to hit control P. And then I'm going to set parent to object keep transform. And I'm going to name this uh, hinge.l. And I'm going to bring back the other hinge and the other doors. <coughs> Excuse me. I'm going to select both empties. And I am going to uh, hit control space to bring the manipulator back and just push them back down into place. And now you can see we can just, you know, grab these empties, hit R to rotate on the Y axis and open up these doors and shut them. Okay, now what we're going to do is we're going to select the ship and we're going to apply a subdivision surface to it. So we're going to select uh, the uh, modif go to the modifier panel. We're going to go here and choose subdivision surface. Okay, and with that, we're going to hit tab to go into edit mode. And we're going to hit A to... Uh, actually, we're going to select... We're going to choose face select. We're going to select a face for all of these. We're going to hit Control L. We're going to hit W. Then we're going to choose shade, shade Smooth for the flags. We're now going to hit, we're going to select everything in here. We're going to actually wait a second. So we're going to select the flags. We're going to hit control L. Then we're going to hit uh, control I to select everything but the flags. And now what we're going to do is, you see right right here, we put a subdivision surface on it. So it makes everything uh, basically rounder, right? But one of the issues that we have, <coughs> excuse me, is this right here. So what we're going to do is with everything selected, we're going to hit shift E. Actually, and we're going to pull. And basically what that did, when, if I hit N, uh, what we did was that we automatically applied a mean crease. If I take this down, you'll see it goes back to normal. You see that right there. Now when I take this up, so Shift Shift E is just a shortcut way of, uh, of doing this, of uh, basically uh, allowing us to get an, an easy way to do some hard surface uh, modeling. Okay, and when we were spinning the ship around, I noticed some kind of strange vertices right here. Sometimes that happens when you have a mirror modifier on. 
So what we're actually going to do is we're going to tab out. We're going to look at the mirror modifier. We're actually going to delete the mirror modifier off of here. So now we have half our ship, right? We're going to hit tab to go into edit mode. And we're actually going to go to, uh, we're going to make sure we have everything selected. So everything selected, we're going to choose vertice right here. We're going to go to mesh. And we're going to go to vertices and we are going to choose uh, remove doubles. You can see right here, it, move, it removes six, <coughs> excuse me, it removes six uh, vertices. And uh, what we're going to do now is we're just going to come back, reapply the mirror modifier. We're going to uh, uh, turn on clipping and we're going to move it up so it's at the top of the, the stack again. We also can take our subdivision surface and turn this up to two views. And uh, we want the reason why we put the subdivision surface, we definitely want to have the cells where it you know, had like those squared lines in them. The reason why, even though we have the subdivision surface and you see these squares right here, is because of our shading. The sum of the shading, we want it to be smooth. We want it to be uh, flat, which will give us hard edges. Some of it we want it to be smooth. We don't want these squares, so we're going to hit tab, we're going to hit A, and we're going to hit C for paint select. We're going to go to face select, we're going to hit C to paint all of this right here. Decent. We just want this. We don't want that piece of wood sticking out there. We're going to hit W and then we're going to choose Shade Smooth. So now when we go here, we can see that here we have that smoothness that we wanted there. Okay, and we're going to see this looks squares look kind of funny. So we're actually going to select all this right here. We're going to hit W shade smooth and uh let's see looks better see how there's a hard line right here suppose you don't want like this hard line right here what you can do with this mean crease is you can go to edge select you can select and hit control space to temporarily take away I'm gonna grab this hole line right here right now you see that hard line there right now watch this <clears throat> when I hit N go up the mean crease and now I can take that mean crease down so now I can adjust it and you see there so now you don't have that hard line and now you have okay you have the uh, once we take the hard line away you can see you have uh, this is just C for paint select you can see you have the squares coming but then you can just grab your paint select and uh, hit W and then shades move and then you know instead of having that hard line there now you have that smooth line and that's one of the cool things you can play with this just like it's just a similar thing up here like uh, right here same thing we can select uh, this edge right here and we can you know take that crease down some and then you can see the crease you know going away there Okay, what we're going to do now is go into cycles and add some quick materials. Okay, so in cycles, what we're going to do is we're going to put our 3D cursor right here. We're going to hit Shift A. We're going to put a plane in. Control space to bring that back to manipulator. We'll take this plane up higher and we'll make it even bigger. <coughs> We're going to hit Shift A, bring a separate plane in. We'll push this down with S to scale. Move this so it's kind of around the boat. Okay, one of the cool things about cycles is you can click this little triangle thing right here. You can split the screen, and I'll hit a T and N. Whoops, N. I'll zoom in on the boat so you can see it. And basically, as you you do things in cycles, you can see it actually in real time. So when you you click here. 
change this to rendered and now you'll actually see like a rendered view so I'm going to do is click this plane right here I'm going to hold my middle mouse button and go over to the materials button here I'm going to click new grab this and make this a little bit bigger I'm going to select the fuse and I'm going to change this from diffuse to emission now you see we have a whole lot more uh, light coming in there Okay, let's deal with this dragon on the front of this ship. So I'm going to hold shift and the middle mouse button and roll it in the pan. I'm going to select the dragon. I am going to click use nodes. I'm going to delete this black uh, color of it. And um, Okay, I'm going to click new. I'm going to select uh, change this to fuse to glossy. I'm going to change the color. kind of like a, a goldish more goldish looking color whatever not exactly um, I'm gonna roll my mouse wheel back and hit T to take away that panel there and push this in to give a little bit more space to be seen I'm then gonna hit tab to go into edit mode I'm gonna hit three to go into orthographic right mode I'm gonna hit Z to go transparent now I'm going to hold a uh, control and the right mouse button. I'm going to draw a lasso select. I'm trying to grab most of the boat without grabbing everything. I'm going to hit Z to go transparent. Go transparent. I'm going to hit shift and uh, face select and grab some of these faces that weren't grabbed. Just grabbing, selecting faces, and I'm selecting faces to. Uh, I'm selecting faces to uh, put a brown texture on, basically. So, with those faces selected, what I'm going to do is I am going to click uh, this plus button here just to make sure I'm not grabbing everything as far as the old texture. I'm going to click new here. I'm going to leave it the fuse. I'm going to choose color. I'm going to go to a more brownish color. I'm going to darken it here. And now I'm going to select a sign. And then you can see the color applied over there. I'm now going to make sure I'm on face select. I'm going to hold my middle mouse button and drag here so I can make sure I'm on face select. I'm going to select these ladders, the column things here. I'm not sure the proper name for them. I'm going to hit control L to make sure those are all selected and then I'm going to uh, go right here and I'm going to hold alt and shift to deselect that whole column there and alt and shift to select the deselect all right there I'm holding shift and the middle mouse button to pan middle mouse button to turn I'm just holding holding shift and alt to deselect here shift and alt to deselect here and now I'm going to select the plus here new uh, keep the diffuse go to color I'm going to turn this to almost a black color and then I'm going to click assign which you can see there's whoa nowhere near as dark as I wanted it um, there we go Click assign again. Okay, there we go. Maybe too too dark this time. Okay. Okay, now I'm just gonna select the faces here while holding shift. Faces here. And control space to take away the manipulator. Select these faces while holding shift. I'm going to hit plus, new, bluish color, assign. 
Okay, now I'm just going to make sure I'm on face select. I'm going to select right here, 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 here. Just grabbing the face so that I'll be able to do control L here. Just rolling in with my mouse, my mouse button. Now I'm going to hit control L. And I'm going to um, select new, or plus here, new here, and I'm just going to select here and then select assign. Okay, now I'm going to select here and here. I'm going to hit control L, select the plus, new, pick a color. sign. I'm going to select right here. These faces, I'm just holding shift as I'm selecting different faces. I'm going to select plus, new. I'm going to change this to glossy. I'm going to select a sign. And I'm going to rough this up a little bit by make it not super super shiny by taking this up somewhat okay then we will go here uh, I'm gonna hold alt and select here whoops like I'm gonna hit a to deselect I'm gonna hold alt and select here I'm going to hold shift and alt and I'm going to select here to grab that whole loop. And I'm just going to hold uh, shift and select these different faces myself. Just holding the middle mouse button to, to turn. Okay, then we'll select the uh, plus here, new. Assign. Assign it again. And we will select here, face select here, here, here. Here, hit Control L. New, new, like here. Sign. Control L. New, new here. Sign. You know, I'm gonna try to stop myself at grabbing these. That's how you get in trouble. It's it's you gotta remember you're doing a tutorial. It, as much time as you want to spend. Obviously, the more time you spend, the better it will it will look. Uh, I can definitely get myself into trouble by not restraining myself when doing a tutorial. Select the new color here. Sign, okay. Okay, let's add some textures to the, uh, the water. I actually just learned this. I learned this from uh, Pig Art. Is a YouTube channel. He does low poly blender tutorials. Check him out. The guy does awesome work. And this is where I learned this technique from. Okay, you're gonna uh, select that plane. You're gonna select subdivide. You're gonna hit T to bring back your tools menu. You're gonna change this to 50. Hit T to take that away again now. And now what you're gonna do is you're gonna add a modifier to it. You're gonna go to your modifier button. 
you're going to add a displace modifier you're going to go to texture you're going to click new then you're going to turn your strength down to 0.1 you won't see anything here the only way that you're going to see it is in your render uh, panel uh, in your render uh, window here it'll just look flat okay what you want to do now is go to your materials panel you want to click new you want to change it from the fuse to glass uh, BSD BSDF change your color to a light blue and then hit W to, whoops hit W to bring up your sheet your specials menu select shade smooth and there's a pretty cool quick way to have uh, water in the background there is one more thing you need to do as far as your ship uh, what you want to do is select your ship hit shift s cursor to selected you want to hit shift a bring an empty in you want a cube empty then you're going to hit a uh, s to scale and bring the empty up bigger than the ship you then want to zoom in close so you can see your other empties hit a to make sure you're not selected on anything and select uh, your empties that have your cargo doors This one right here might give you a little bit of a problem. You want to zoom in very close. Now that you have all your empties selected, what you want to do is uh, now zoom back and select this empty. And then hit Control P. Uh, object Keep Transform. And then you also want to select the ship itself. And then uh, select the ship first and then select your, you know, your big empty here. Your master empty hit control P object keep transform and now select my fact select this big empty and we'll name this uh, master ship handle and now what you should be able to do is just grab the ship and I uh, hit G and whoops one last thing I forgot select your the dragon symbol in the front select the empty hit control p object keep transform and now you should be able to select this master ship transform and up oh, that's why it's good stairs they should be the last things like them control p object keep transform and then G, and now you can just move your ship and have your you know, your doors and everything move fairly uh, easily. Okay, guys, that's it for the tutorial. For all you out there that uh, like the videos on this channel and support this channel, thank you. I greatly appreciate it. And for those of you who are new to this channel, if you like these videos and you would like to see more, Please subscribe and thank you for viewing.